Let's take a look at how we can download WebLogic Server for use in our development ECM environment. Go out to oracle.com, scroll down, and under the middleware column, select the WebLogic Server link. This will take you to the WebLogic landing page. Again, scroll down a little and check out the right side of the page under Downloads. See the Oracle WebLogic Server Enterprise Edition link? Go ahead and give that a click. That takes you to the Downloads tab, but we want to select the See All link about the middle of the page. From here, accept your license agreement and then find the Additional Platforms column and select the File 1 link under Generic. Go through the download process and ultimately you'll end up with a jar on your desktop. Now that we have WebLogic, let's see how we can kick off the installation. There are at least two different methods that can be used here. One, if my Java is all set up correctly, which it will need to be, I can likely just double click on the jar to execute it and kick off the installation. I'll show you one other way. If we click start and go to the command prompt, we can change to the directory where the jar is and then we can type java space dash jar space wls n34 underscore generic dot jar and press enter. If we use this method, we'll be able to see the progress of the extraction as the application installer unpacks itself. Using the other method of double click, we wouldn't see this progress and we might become concerned that the application was not loading properly. With the extraction process complete, the installer displays the welcome screen. Click Next to get started. Here you'll be asked about an existing middleware home or a new middleware home. For our development environment, we'll create a new middleware home and we'll supply c colon slash oracle slash middleware as our installation directory. Click Next. On this screen, I'm asked if I would wish to receive security updates by Oracle support. I don't want to at this time, so I'll simply click Next and then answer yes to each of the prompts. At this point, we'll want to make sure that we select Custom Installation and click Next. At the Choose Products and Components screen, I notice a few things I don't really need at this point. Unselect the Evaluation Database and the Oracle Coherence Products, then click Next. On the JDK Selection screen, you want to select your local JDK. If it's not listed, go ahead and click Browse to go find it. Once completed, you can select Next. Here we choose the product installation directories, and oftentimes this is based on the middleware home we selected earlier, and no change will be necessary. Simply click Next. You can use Node Manager to enable remote start and other services. For our development instance, we'll start this from the command line so we can watch the output most of the time. Leave No selected and click Next. Leave All Users Start Menu folder selected and click Next. We're pretty much done. The installation summary is shown. We'll go ahead and click Next and the actual installation packages will begin to run. Notice that it says Oracle WebLogic 11G Release 1, but the version is 10.3.4. This can be confusing for some people. When the installation complete screen displays, you're nearly done. Uncheck the Run Quick Start and click the Done button. With our installation complete, you will now need to learn how to start and stop your managed servers and your WebLogic admin server. That's a topic for another video.